Hey, it's Steve. I'm starting a new three and a half by five and a half foot end scale layout project. And in this video, we're gonna build the bench work and install the basic landforms. Let's watch. Okay, so this new three and a half by five and a half foot end scale layout project you can see here features a double track twice around design. The size of this layout is the absolute largest I can fit in the back of my vehicle, and so that was the size constraint limitation I had to work with on this design. The double track twice around design is certainly track heavy, but does allow for running longer trains, such as passenger trains, in a small space without having the train chase its tail too much. While there aren't a lot of switching options here, the layout does offer some operation, with effectively an interchange track at the top, a major warehouse to switch in the middle, and a team track at the bottom right serving a construction area. The tracks at the top and bottom right also serve as potential avenues for layout expansion, and I may go ahead and build a couple small staging yards that can attach to both of those tracks. This way a train could enter from one track, take a loop or two around the layout, and then exit the other track. The two crossovers also allow the left side of the layout to be used as a runaround track for switching operations as needed. I'll have a link in the video description where you can check out the full list of Kato track pieces used in the layout construction, but the minimum radius on the inner track is 12.4 inches and the minimum radius on the outer track is 13.7 inches. Those radius curves are only on the inner loop on the left hand side and that part is mostly under the mountain. The other curves all have radii ranging from between 15 and 18.9 inches, so passenger trains will look good on most of those curves, and the tighter ones in the mountain won't really be seen anyway. And so pretty much any available locomotive should run fine. Uh, even the Athern Big Boy, which I plan to pick up once it becomes available in a couple of months, only requires an 11 inch radius to operate, and so it should work fine on the outer track of this layout, which has a 13.7 minimum radius. The layout will have a New England fall theme to it, and so it will be fun to create lots of colorful deciduous trees for the layout. The structures indicated here are just placeholders, and I'll be adjusting building placement and type and such accordingly as I actually pick up and build all the structures for the layout, but the long structure in the front will be a passenger station. Anyway, let's go on to the layout construction. In terms of lumber, I used two pieces of one by six pine that were 66 inches long, five uh, one by six pine that were 42, two sections of one by three pine that were 63 inches long, not the 64.5 you see on the screen, and then four sections of one by three that were 42 inches long. And then for legs, I use actually uh, two types of legs, four screw on legs and four of these kind of big butcher block legs uh, that, that are bolted on. And the screw on legs are so I can quickly put the legs on and off during construction of the layout. So I can put the legs on, stand it up, work on the layout, and then unscrew them and stand the layout up against a wall, uh, allowing me to get a car back in the garage. So uh, that's the main reason I have those. And then the beefier legs that are bolted on are obviously for more permanent installation of the layout. I needed four brackets for the screw on legs, a dozen or so six inch long, quarter inch bolts with washers and nuts, uh, and probably five inch long bolts would have worked, I think, but I had six inch bolts on hand, so I used those, and those were obviously long enough. Um, I also used one four by eight sheet of two inch insulation foam board, one four by eight sheet of one inch insulation foam board, and a four by eight sheet of half inch foam board. For assembly, I used lots of glue, wood screws, nails, and then I also used three cans of Great Stuff Expanding Spray Foam, which really kind of helps bind everything together as well as fill in some of the gaps. And I did use several pounds of sculpt mold I have had comments in the past about wasting money with sculpt mold since it is more expensive than other options, but that's really only if you buy it in those small bags from craft stores, which cost I think like $4 a pound or something like that. But you can actually buy it in bulk, like 25, 50 pound bags, that kind of thing um, from art dealers online. And then at that rate, it's like about $1.75 a pound. So it's really pretty inexpensive. And for a layout like this, uh, you know, I might use 10 pounds of sculpt mold, I don't know. And so really I'm looking at, you know, 15 to $20 worth of sculpt mold for this whole layout project. So it's not really that expensive when you buy it in bulk. So to assemble the frame, I started with the end pieces. I glued and screwed on a 42 inch long section of the one by three to the 42 inch long section of one by six. And then for the other end, I actually just used two pieces of one by three uh, to make up that 42 inch section because I could better make use of the materials that way. It wouldn't have to waste a couple scrap pieces. 
I then did the same thing for the long sides of the frame, but uh, those 1x3s on the long sides needed to be 3 inches shorter than the 1x6 side because I did actually want to have that nest inside of the side pieces. Once I had all the sides done, it was time to assemble them, and so I added glue to another 42 inch long piece of 1x6 and put that on one end as well, resting it on top of those inner 1x3s, which kind of made a nice little shelf there. And to keep things square, I used some corner clamps, and then I drilled pilot holes in various places and then put screws through that 1x6 that's horizontal into the side pieces of the uh, layout framing. I also drilled a couple pilot holes on each corner and used a couple finish nails on each corner to further secure things while the glue dried. I put another 1x6 on the far end and then glued and nailed a third uh, 42 inch section of 1x6 in the middle. At this point I took the mostly completed frame and test fit it in the back of my vehicle to make sure it would actually fit uh, since that would be kind of a, a pretty frustrating thing to finish the layout and then not have it fit in the back of the car. And so everything was fine and I was able to keep working on the layout. Next, I took four heavy-duty top plates and attached those to each corner of the bottom of the layout. Each of these are held on by five screws, and a 28-inch long table leg can then be screwed into each plate, making for quick and easy legs. Again, I'll also be bolting on some stout butcher block legs later on, but these are great for quick setup and takedown of the layout during construction, or even afterwards if you want to store it vertically. The interior of the layout was to be filled in with two inch thick insulation foam board. And this foam can be found in pink, blue, and yellow colors depending on where you buy it and what manufacturer it comes from. I had already cut the four by eight foot sheet to fit roughly, and then I placed it on top of the layout in order to cut it to exact size. Once I had the two inch foam cut, I put the half inch foam on top and cut that one to size as well. Now one thing to watch out for is that the half inch foam does come with a layer of plastic on both the top and bottom faces. So be sure you pull that out before attempting to actually glue it or anything because otherwise uh, it's just not gonna stick to that plastic. Uh, the one inch and two inch foam boards do not have plastic, at least the ones uh, that I've bought. It's possible that other manufacturers uh, have plastic on there. So just be careful and watch for that. I took out both layers of foam and then added glue on the 1x6 cross pieces and then I decided I might as well add a couple more 1x3 cross pieces for additional strength and support. Uh, and so I glued those in place and then inserted a 2 inch piece of foam board. At this time I cut a hole in the center of one of the side panels for the Digitrax local net panel since this is going to be a DCC operated layout. And this would have been easier to do with my jigsaw but our vehicle was blocking the cabinet that I keep the saw in and I couldn't get it, I couldn't get to it without moving the car out of the way. And because it was really cold outside, I didn't want to open the garage door and have the garage get 30 degrees colder real quick. So I just drilled some holes in the side and then used my coping saw to cut the rectangular opening. Pine cuts easily, so that wasn't very hard and was very quick, but I did mark up the side of the layout a bit, but I'll sand that out later. And for now you can just see how this panel fits. I put the half inch piece of foam board back on the layout and then assembled all the track I had on hand at the time. I still hadn't had some of the pieces arrive yet uh, at the time I was doing this, but I had enough to actually get pretty much everything marked out. And so once everything was assembled that I had, I just took a Sharpie to mark out where I wanted to cut the foam board. Then I took my knife and cut the half inch foam board in kind of a cookie cutter style. I started working on cutting supports for the half inch foam out of pieces of scrap foam that I had and I got everything roughly lined up to the heights that I wanted and then I worked on cutting the supports more precisely. To make risers, I cut off a block of one inch thick foam and then using a ruler cut progressively larger slices off using the previous piece as a guide. I ended up with a whole series of riser blocks to put under the half inch foam base for the track. That way I could have a nice smooth gray to the track as it rose two inches from the front to the back of the layout.
I arranged the blocks evenly and then added some waist to keep everything weighted down so it wouldn't shift. And then I added some additional riser pieces to fill in any of the gaps that were more than about four inches or so long. With all the blocks ready to go, I removed each block one at a time and then added some glue and then replaced it and then worked my way through all the support blocks on that one side. I used a few long screws as well to help clamp all the foam pieces together. This way I wouldn't have to worry about anything getting knocked out of place while I was working on the remainder of the layout. The back side of the layout was all one elevation without grades and the main center area was also going to be one elevation without grades as well. And so those areas were obviously very easy to set up. I glued and screwed those sections together and then I replaced the half inch foam with the one inch piece foam uh, instead of layering two half inch pieces for the middle just to make it a little bit easier to construct that part of the layout. Once I had all my foam risers in place, I used some great stuff expanding foam to fill in all the gaps. I wanted to make sure the half inch top layer of foam was really supported securely everywhere and adding the expanding foam adds a tremendous amount of strength by kind of binding everything together and filling in those little gaps. And it's also a great adhesive and so it does uh, work really well for this application, but it does obviously stick really well to everything including your hands, so be careful when you're using it and do wear gloves uh, since it does again become very hard to get off your hands if you do get it on your skin. While the foam expanded and dried I patched all the dimples created by the screws with drywall patching plaster so I'd have a nice smooth surface everywhere on the layout. The expanding foam did need to be trimmed up of course in many areas and then I needed to carve out the lake and river area. I tried hacking away at it with my hot wire cutter with moderate success and so eventually I just kind of gave up and went back to using my knife. I could have used my Stanley Sureform tool, which would have worked great here. It would have been a great application for that tool, but it was extremely dry with the Arctic air in place and the static was already terrible. And I don't think I could have ever gotten all those little bits of foam off of me if I would used a foam shaving tool. So I decided to just cut off bigger chunks with a knife and then fill it in, smooth it out with sculpt mold later, instead of getting a nice smooth uh, curved surface there, uh, just because the air was just really, really dry. The Pink Panther made a brief appearance here at this point as this was to be the top of the tunnel sections. To make the tunnel walls I took some half inch thick foam board and then scored it multiple times to allow it to bend easier. I then cut the board to the needed height and tacked that in place with some nails. I did the same thing for a divider between the two tunnel sections, though that isn't really needed but this way if you look into a tunnel you can see just that one track and you won't see across to the other track and so it does make it look more like a tunnel and not just a large opening inside the tunnel portal. So you can see how things looked at that point. I also bolted on the large block legs. I simply drilled a hole from each side of the corner through the side of the layout and the leg and then put a bolt through each of those and tightened it up really good and it was a pretty secure leg setup. I might have to go back and add some additional supports but it was really quite secure just with a couple of bolts on each side. Next, I cut some rough tunnel portals out of foam and attached those to each ends of the tunnels. I'll eventually add some real tunnel portals here, probably made out of plaster, uh, but this will help to provide something to attach those future tunnel portals to, and will also allow me to complete the inside of the tunnels. Here's a quick overview of the partially completed tunnel area. I did fill in some of the gaps with some more spray foam, and then I added some additional blocks of foam and spray foam on the top section of a tunnel uh, that you'll see in a bit. At this point I mixed up a large batch of sculpt mold to, to which I added some brown paint. You don't have to do that, that's certainly just something I do uh, to kind of provide some tint to the plaster in there. So if you do chip off a chunk of sculpt mold at some point, damaging the layout in some random way, you're not going to have a glaring patch of white there from the plaster. You'll just see, you know, sort of a light brown color which will look a little bit better. I worked the sculpt mold around much of the base of the layout including to the inside of the tunnels. This will provide a nice rock texture to the tunnel walls and make them look more realistic if you peek inside the tunnels. I continue to add more sculpt mold all around the layout and I'll need to add more eventually later on here and there, but I wanted to get most of it done at this point uh, just because it is obviously kind of messy to do. And if you do that before you do a lot of the track installation, you just have that much less risk of getting your track covered in sculpt mold. You don't have to worry about covering it up as much. And so it's just something I like to get out of the way as much as possible before I do my track laying. That base layer of sculpt mold does really give you a better sense of how things will eventually look. 
Once I put the track in place, I did have to make a few adjustments here and there. Uh, the main one being to move a road over a bit so it wouldn't cross right over in the middle of a turnout. Anyway, this is mostly foam board construction and the multiple layers of foam board joined by the Great Stuff expanding foam and the various risers, everything glued and screwed together, provides a really rock solid base. You can press on it really hard and it won't flex at all. You could have done obviously all of this with wood, but the foam weighs less and really that's kind of important for a layout that has to move around. And it's also far easier to work with and you really aren't giving up that much strength at all. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. The benchwork is pretty much complete at this point, along with the base layer of scenery. In the next video, we're going to get all the track installed, all the wiring done, including hooking up a Digitrax DCC system, wiring up all the turnouts for remote operation, and then running some trains on this layout. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one or any future videos. Anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.